Paul Daniel was music director of English National Opera and uh, Opera North, principal conductor of the English Northern Philharmonia. He's been a guest conductor with major orchestra and opera companies around the world. He makes his Santa Fe Opera debut conducting The 13th Child, a world premiere this summer. Welcome. It's great to be here. Thank you. Is your approach to a modern score different than your approach to a classical era or romantic score? Yes. The main difference when you're doing a premiere, you know, that's the first time people have done it, is that, you know, you've got very little to go on. You've got all the information from the conductor and the, uh, from the composer and the librettist and all, the, but very little of what is expected, you know, and it's like a blank canvas for you to, to, to write on. You know, you have all the information. When you do La Boheme or, I don't know, La Traviata or something that everybody knows, you know, you're, you're breaking through quite a lot of received knowledge and it goes like this or oh my favorite version is that you know so or this is too slow or that yeah no. exactly yeah. so in a way it's quite liberating to start from scratch but it's it, it, it also makes things more complicated because you're 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 creating you're genuinely creating off the off the page all these dots on the page for the orchestra or all these ideas in the libretto from the from the from the from the, from the librettists you're having to create this stuff for the first time. And some things work, and some things definitely need to be changed or adapted or developed. So this was... The uh, first time. There is a recording of this piece. So... We're very lucky to have a recording. But uh, does I that mean that it was finished musically, or was there still uh, a stuff to work out? Well, it's a very interesting speak? recording. I mean... You almost never have this opportunity. Sometimes, you know, we all make little recordings to go on, you know, to give to the singers to help them, maybe a piano version of the of the piece to help them learn it. But this time, here was an orchestra in Denmark, the Odense Symphony Orchestra had played this piece. Um, and it's not... And we say it's not exactly a recording of the opera. It's a recording of the opera, but it's not. They recorded the orchestra uh, without any singers. They sent the recording out to New York, I think, or to over here to the States, and I'm not sure exactly where, but then the singers were brought together, a cast, including Tamara uh, Tammy, uh, who's singing the role of Gertrude, the Queen. She's on the recording. They all arrived in a recording studio. They had to sing along with the orchestra. Now, it's brilliantly done, and it's a very interesting document, if you like, but, of course, the decisions about how fast or how slow or how much time to give the singer who wasn't there had to be done in absentia you know they, they they didn't know you know and David Strobin was the conductor of part of this recording great job amazing uh, and the, the singers are very well together with the orchestra but it's like you build part of uh, I don't know part of a, an aeroplane or a house in one country you take it across the ocean and you hope that the people who've, who've creating the other part are going to be able to fit your part with their part right you know, so it's it's a um, it's a fascinating document, but of course, when you get your hands on it as a cast and as an orchestra and as a conductor, and of course for, for the director of the production, when you all get your hands on it and are creating this thing in a in an, a, an, a, an amalgam of all of these different elements, which is what opera is all about, you know, all of the things, the visual, the decor the singing the playing the the time how do you breathe in the scene where's the tension where's the release it all has to be created in the kitchen together so we're all in a kitchen together and we're creating we're creating something that actually is very different now were you familiar with Ruder's music before this i know paul uh i was uh music director of english national opera at the time when we uh decided to bring the first production of The Handmaid's Tale uh, to London. So it was the premiere of that piece in the UK and it was it was only the second time this production had been seen. So it was it was really very important within months of it being complete, a world premiere. So I didn't conduct it. The, I, it was a great privilege to be able to listen to this thing going together. It was a beautifully done production. Philip and Lloyd and a uh, very good conductor and our orchestra, of course. So it, the experience of that was really was a good, good preparation for me, you know, to see 
what's in his music of course it's a different piece but his language the way he writes the way he asks the orchestra to support the cut of the singing the way he uses the orchestra to to illustrate the libretto to accompany the libretto to create a kind of carpet as well as a whole scene the scenography if you like for, 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 the, for the words yeah, I mean it seems to me it's setting not only uh, the context of the entire opera but he sets different scenes different ways uh, yeah do you mean here in the 13th child what, uh, what yeah. would you say the audience should listen for if anything as they come to see it I'm amazed at uh, when I think about what what he, what is included, if you like, in this story. It's a very rich story. It's a it's a, a fairy story, and it's it, you hear it and see it and experience it on many different levels. And I think if you were a child, you'd see one, you'd take one path, if you like, through the story. If you're an adult, you might see it from a different point of view. If you're looking at it from a psychological point of view, you can see very different things. And on one level. The way Paul writes his operas is incredibly clear and simple, which means that you can express everything in a very direct way, and it means that you can pack an enormous amount of information in without it sounding complicated or complex or sophisticated in the wrong way. You know, it tells the story absolutely straight to your to your you know your emotional centre. You know, if you, if you're listening, so. The music actually changes, I'm going to say, style, but it's all in style because it's Paul's style, you know, it's his way of writing. Some of the music is very knotty and the tensions in, 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 the, in the rivalries between the king and the, the, the king of the, the regent of the, of the neighbouring country, all of these kind of political tensions are told with music that is very grinding sometimes and quite aggressive trombones and trumpets playing sometimes with mutes and very hard edged and sometimes the orchestra collides with itself some one part of the orchestra maybe the strings with the keyboards are playing one rhythm and then the uh, saxophones and clarinets are playing a different rhythm and then the horns with the trumpets are playing another one and they're all kind of chiseled if you like you're taking a piece of rock and you're chiseling off hard hard pieces of rock it's like ha- the hard real politique of, of, of the story you know these these two kingdoms as a king there's there's he's going mad and he doesn't understand and then there's a tension he banishes his 12 children there to be taken away and he, all of that it's tough nasty story we see it and hear it in a very direct way as i say you know you, you don't think oh this is too much for me i can't understand you understand the these clashes of personalities because the music and, and storytelling is so direct mm-hmm. now fast cut if you like rather like a film can cut you know very quickly between scenes you know you have a sort of complete contrast you're with the queen and you're with eventually with her daughter the daughter who is the 13th child who is born um, and immediately hidden away from the from the madness of the king or from the tensions of this story the music is soft edged it's more harmonious in the sense that you understand the harmony and the concord of the music you know the concordance of the, the way the, the the chords fit together in a completely different way um, it's not man versus woman, male versus female. You know, it's 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 a, a tension uh, contrast between between the hard parts of the story and the softer parts of the story. The love, the sense of the brother brothers finding their sister, long lost sister. All of these emotionally very intimate moments are told with beautifully. Uh, lyrical and soft edged music and long singing lines and then within seconds you're in a scene again which is all about maybe this guy Droken who is the, like the kind of grey character behind the scenes he's always, he's always a problem 
you know he creates a problem for the for the king he then creates a problem because he he lusts after the king's wife and that's kind of another part of I think she even says that when she comes back something like fighting. I can't believe dr- I still have to deal with Drogon after all this time yeah yeah you keep coming back to this Drogon character he's very like Iago in the story of Othello Shakespeare or Othello the Opera you know this Iago who is an absolutely f- evil force on one level but he's completely in everybody's lives and everybody needs has need of him but he can destroy everything Paul fascinating Daniel, character Paul Daniel conducts the world premiere of the 13th child with music by Paul Reuters this summer at Santa Fe Opera thank you so much for joining me thank you it's been a pleasure